not only um, not only are we uh, focused on understanding the mechanisms through which we can affect the biology of the brain and thereby prevent diseases like Alzheimer's or delay their development, but we're also interested in the wealth of digital tools um, and tools that harness big data that can be put uh, in service of identifying uh, brain diseases before they become symptomatic and uh, basically flagging individuals for interventions uh, that could either uh, delay the onset or prevent the development of symptomatic um, diseases like Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. So along those lines, uh, Todd is a uh, founder of a company, uh, Careful, uh, which has figured out a way to harness the extraordinary amounts of data uh, generated by our financial transactions and begin to use uh, patterns uh, in those data to um, identify people who might be at risk uh, uh, for various um, age-related uh, diseases of the brain. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce Todd. Uh, Todd is um, on the other end, uh, uh, not a scientist. He's a, a CEO, uh, an MBA from Harvard Business School uh, and graduated from University of Pennsylvania where he was a Ben Franklin scholar. And um, he is well known to the McCann Center in part because he was CEO uh, at the product innovation firm Fahrenheit 212, a partner of our dear friend, Pete Mollick. Um, and that, that firm uh, was, uh, they built successfully together and uh, was ultimately acquired by Capgemini in 2016. So Todd, uh, delighted to have you. Thank you. Uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. Thank you for the, uh, the introduction. Um, you know, John and Jordan, appreciate you welcoming here. Uh, greetings from California. Um, this will be very different than the last one. So, uh, so I, got, I, got, I got to hear uh, s some of the others. Um, um, I, I, do, I do think that's great uh, to, to, to the idea of, of, of breadth. Um, I may not be the typical presenter in this forum. Um, uh, I have a very business, fo business focused background. Um, I'm not a physician, not a researcher, I'm not a data, data scientist. Um, uh, I'm an entrepreneur and developer of new products, uh, new products and services for consumers. So we're gonna spend a, a lot of time in the consumer world in here, right? We're gonna leave uh, the clinical world and, 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 and look at what consumers see and touch. Um, uh, I'm currently building a company called Careful, uh, as John mentioned, that I want to show you today. And um, I'm here to do that because uh, first, I'm a big believer, ha um, having understood really the, the mission of this organization. I'm, I'm a huge believer in the mission. Um, but I also think that while we do very different things, we can be helpful to each other. And uh, I think that's something to, I want to kick off that exploration today. I don't come with answers and I don't come with a, um, to, to read a research report. Um, more than I want to introduce something that we think is really interesting to your mission. And so, um, so that's, that, that, that's the purpose. Um, I want to introduce the idea here of what we are careful call financial caregiving. And financial caregiving is, is that's someone that's involved in the daily finances of another person as a caregiver. Um, so as you and this group pursue a proactive approach to brain health, I know that caregiving and early recognition are important nodes in, in that group's mission. Um, uh, and and I, think we, I, I think we might be able to help. Um, um, I think that caregiving is often thought of um, through a healthcare lens and through a living support lens. And what I wanna make the case here is that there is a huge element which is under-researched, under-leveraged, under-appreciated, um, and it's the money part the daily finances and the transactional part. And it may sound disconnected uh, at times, but I, I wanna make the point here that in my business, it's not. Um, so to understand why financial, financial caregiving could be important to this audience, uh, I wanna go back to my background just a bit. Um, I used to lead a company, as John mentioned, called Fahrenheit. And we developed new products and new services um, for, uh, for companies, about half of them were banks. Um, so from simple stuff to inventing a new type of credit card, to a new small business offer, um, 
new ways to analyze loans. We come up with all of these ideas in businesses, new trading tools for brokerages. And in this time, I learned what may be the main point of my time with you here is that transactional data is an incredible and incredibly powerful predictor of behavior and health. I remember uh, at one point a long time ago, being on a job, a consulting job for American Express. And we were building something. We spent some time with their fraud group where a lot of this happens. And they have something like 2,000 or 3,000 rules that fire every time you swipe your card. Look, usually looking for fraud. Um, one of the fun facts they told us at the time was that American Express can predict with unnerving accuracy whether or not you're going to get divorced. And they are almost always right. They don't do anything with that information. Um, but that, 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 uh, there are stories and signals in the transactional data. Um, and so there are two, two points to what I'm going to show you. The first is a straightforward one. Um, I want you to see what we're building for um, Alzheimer's uh, or patients, memory care, people who suffer from memory issues and their caregivers. Um, we built something that from a consumer lens, we think is really valuable. So it's a business. It's a for-profit business. I want to show it to you. Okay? It's a financial services company. Um, hope you like it. Hope you introduce it to patients um, selfishly. Help spread the word. Um, but the other, and I think more important, big open question is the potential of what's possible if we study or collaborate or pursue this big data set together. Um, so... Um, with that, I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so um, the business is called Careful. Um, it's the same thing, by the way, we show to investors. So, so I want you to, you're you going to see um, uh, a very real document that, that, that's out uh, in, in the marketplace. And, um, I said um, Careful is a financial caregiving company, right? We, there are 45 million people in the U.S., um, who are responsible for the financial well-being of an aging loved one. Um, we're the first financial services platform for that generation of, under, of people who we believe are very underserved. If you know, have anyone that's ever called Citibank about their parents' bank account, you, you know what I'm talking about. When you get, start to get into some of these issues, the financial system makes it very hard to support someone else. Or if you have a memory care issue, there's not a lot of tools actually that you can use um, to, to, to back you up. Um, so what is financial care? What is financial caregiving? Uh, it's coordination. Uh, it's contribution. It's oversight. Um, it's a million things. It's people logging in as their parents and um, uh, looking for fraud line by line. Um, it's people um, uh, collecting from siblings and commingling that money uh, in their own accounts. Also a terrible idea as they, um, everything you do, in the world of financial caregiving um, creates uh, a bunch of problems. Um, there is 50 billion of fraud in this space. Um, people taking advantage of those with memory care, not understanding that people uh, might have memory issues um, and then actually um, due to cognitive decline or disease making um, poor, uh, poor financial decisions. Um, there's elder fraud, which we know about 50 billion. There is fraud from within the trusted circle, um, um, particularly when someone has a memory care issue and, and kind of sadly. Um, whether it's the brother or someone that feels entitled, a new friend, um, huge problem in the financial services world. Um, you also have 24 trillion of impending wealth transfer moving between generations. So that's why you have a lot of people at, kind of at this table trying to fix it. Um, and I would say financial caregiving, like memory care, um, uh, like cognitive decline, like, like, like Alzheimer's, like dementia, it's not a one-time, it's not a moment. It's up to a 20-year financial relationship that goes through many stages. There's the trigger moment when a caregiver notices a memory care, a memory issue, let's say unpaid bills in the mailbox, an illegible check, uh, mistakes, and we'll talk about what those signals are when we get to this, some of the data. Um, um, there's what we call the co-management moment, which is when people are managing together um, while their adult is getting some help, but they're still financially independent and living independently, making their own decisions. There's total takeover where someone else is in now in charge of the finances. And then there's, there, there's um, a phase of lines down. Each one of those is, is, is complex in its, in, in its own way. Here's, here's where I think I, the, we are, our paths intersect. Um, many of you probably saw this study um, in the fourth quarter of last year from, John, uh, from Johns Hopkins uh, that, made the, that drew the conclusion that dementia 
uh, and symptoms of dementia can first be seen in the wallet up to six years before they are, they're often seen or di- a de- dementia or Alzheimer's is diagnosed in the physician's office. Through missed payments, missed bills, financial mistakes, credit score hits, and things like that. And I'll circulate the link to this study if you, if you haven't, but I, I anticipate most people on this call probably are, are, are aware of it. Um, that's quite dramatic, right? And it means if you have a transactional data set, instead of kind of saying, mom, maybe losing it, we actually can see um, uh, behavior change. And we can see some of these things long before someone gets to a physician's office, up to six years before, it's eight years in some underserved communities, um, where, 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 where a, um, adult children will put their credit onto their, okay, mom's losing it. I'm going to pay the bills. And then the credit score hits domino through the family. And you have a, you have a, a systemic problem. Um, so, um, lots that we can, can do here, but this is really when, when we saw that actually what we were doing really building as a service for people, for older adults and their financial caregivers was um, actually spitting off a data set that could be used in a lot of ways. And so um, here's kind of what I want to say to this group. And I'm going to show you now what it looks like for consumers. I'm going to move to consumer land in a second. But I, we have the belief that the transactional data is a vital sign. It is trusted by entire parts of the for-profit community to predict all kinds of minute behaviors. And it is the truth. We know where they are. We know what they're doing. We can see different types of transactional behavior. And um, it's a huge part of both the um, of adult life and a huge part of the caregiving life as well. Um, and I would suggest that it is the, that having this stream of transactional data is a... Um, I think one of an emerging battleground for a group like this um, to um, frankly to see what we can do, and um, in, an, in an effort to find the markers and vital signs for brain health, and to get that into something that's proactive and, and tracked early and often, I would make I would humbly argue that transactional data is one of the most underlooked vital signs out there. All right, and there's a whole um, um, group of of uh, people in the financial services world who, who use it all the time for just everything else but brain health. And so maybe we should be using it for, for this purpose. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop there for a second. I'm going to switch hats and show you what consumers see. I'm going to show you something that doesn't tell this story the whole time, but show you what the tool is. Um, so you can see that sometimes the things that get the vital signs are not straight down the middle healthcare pro- products or, or doctor's office visits. Sometimes they're tools they would use in their everyday life that can be... Um, you know, whether it's exercise like we just heard or whether it's, whether it's financial caregiving, maybe the, maybe the indicators and the data streams that are going to be really helpful to you um, come from the for-profit world like us. Uh, and, and that's maybe uh, one, of the, one of the points that I, I want to make here. And we, maybe we should be thinking about how we form um, partnerships and, and collaborate. And, and um, so let's, let's, let's take a look. This is what people see, okay? So um, careful. Um, is a, an artificial intelligence machine learning engine to look for things that banks don't look for today. So it's a service that looks for your transactional data and it, um, it uh, looks for things like, um, and some of these will sound familiar to you. Um, they look for things like um, duplicate payments, paying the same thing over and over again um, by accident, um, looks for, um, um, what we call um, sloppy paying. Um, when you used to pay your uh, bill within a tight window, but then um, it starts to loosen, right? In the window, it starts to look some, someone had hazard and you can, you can, you can plot that data. Um, it, um, uh, we look for financial caregiving specific stuff. So charitable contributions, um, we often don't think about, but actually when an, an older adult makes a charitable contribution, um, often they're recurring or they make them over and over again. They don't know them. The last election cycle, both parties convinced older adults that the world was ending and they needed to sign up for political donations. Older adults did not know those things were recurring. Um, so whether it's things like gift cards, um, just core credit monitoring and identity theft, um, behavior change. So what our engine does is it's not, we don't, we don't set rules and say, we'll let you know if it's over 10 grand. It looks backward in about an hour, looks backward two years into your transactional history um, and very instantly understands what normal looks like for each individual person and patient. So, um, w- so we're looking um, for, th- for things like fraud that, you know, like gift cards that are markers, but we're looking for changes in behavior 
transactional behavior from an individual. You don't usually shop here. You don't usually shop this way. You don't usually spend here. You have strange um, outflows, maybe new outflows, new inflows. And that tells us all kinds of things from bad behavior, good behavior, fraud, um, but also cognitive decline, um, signals that, that, that may be um, important to, to brain health. So um, uh, moving quickly, um, communication is another big piece of this. How families, caregivers speak to, and physicians speak to each other Mom is losing it is not helpful in the world of in the in the transactional world, um, and so um, um, uh, we create what we call solve for the Thanksgiving problem, which is um, people fighting well over subjective data. We want to put objective data into this uh, into this space. So um, we put um, pattern of missed payments. Um, you create a, a careful allows you to create a, what we call a trusted circle where you can. Um, add people who should receive these alerts, not access to accounts, but alerts, and they all see the same information. Duplicate payments, pattern of missed payments, things like that. And so um, um, communication solves a lot of problems just by everyone seeing the same thing. Finally, um, um, legal planning and, and advice um, about what, when do you need power of attorney? Um, how do you recognize dementia in the wallet? Also stuff like how do you do your parents' taxes if they have an issue, if they have an issue. So we write a lot about this and have been for two years. Finally, for practices that put their patients on this, whether they're physicians' practices, elder law practices, or um, uh, even wealth advisors, um, we, we, we created a, a dashboard by demand to let you see it all in the, in the same place, who's getting what, who's getting a lot of alerts, so that you can reach in and have an impactful intervention as you see someone's getting a lot of uh, issues, issues or alerts. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like. This is an advertisement, right? It's a consumer video, but I want to show you what people see. And we are not saying, hey, we're here to measure your brain health. We're here to say, hey, we're here, to, uh, we're here to protect you, right? So I want you to see that kind of messaging as something that can maybe a node, um, hopefully in the, the larger fight. Um, hopefully this works. Older adults lose over $37 billion each year to fraud, scams, and money mistakes, with an average loss of $34,000 per person. We're told to keep a careful watch over bank accounts and money. But what does being careful really mean? Keeping money matters under control is hard. And if you're helping out by looking after someone else's money, it's even harder. That's why there's Careful, the money service that does the work of organizing and protecting everyday finances so we can all get back to living. Careful protects your finances, identity, and credit by using three distinct layers of protection. Smart money monitoring of everyday accounts, constant watch over identity and credit theft, and a community that connects you to expert advice for your unique questions. Stop juggling passwords, post-it notes, and calls to the bank. Careful, sophisticated systems monitor every account in one place, looking for the things that banks don't help you find. Scams that target older adults, strange financial behavior, unusual money movement, a trusted person misusing your funds, and simple everyday mistakes. From that unexpected Amazon bill, to a mistaken drop in prescription purchases, to a gift card when no one was giving gifts. Careful finds the patterns and problems to stop little issues from becoming big ones. Careful also scans the web for any theft or leaks of your personal data, with real humans answering your calls and $1 million in identity theft insurance. When anything looks strange, you'll be alerted, and you can choose to share those alerts with those you trust, working together to resolve things easily. For families, that means fewer fights and faster fixes. Careful's team of experts answer your real life questions through our online community. And the best part, Careful can never move or access any of your funds. It's specifically built for the 55 and over community and trusted by banks. So you stay safe and in control and you can stop worrying about bills paid on time, accidental donations, protected credit scores, and simply be careful. So um, uh, I'm going to, in, in the interest of opening for questions and the time, I have nine o'clock, um, we stand things up for partners all the time. I think there's an idea where it'd be fun to do this for, for MG8 and, and McCrantz at one point where this is a live site where um, a bank is offering this to um, um, all of its customers uh, and, and uh, basically as a benefit to them. And so we, we kind of co-brand this with lots of organizations of people that want to give this to their um to their uh, patients or clients. Um, so there's lots of, way, lots, lots of ways to do that. Um, but um, what I kind of want to end and is, is just uh, ideas, right? And then open for questions. And so um, 
the the first is is you know we um are looking for cognitive decline and looking for these things, but we all need help in that fight. We need help in that fight. So we um, have a great team of data scientists. I'll get what we look for behavior change, sloppy paying, um, the signal missed payments, pattern of missed payments, duplicate payments, often buying the same thing, um, strange merchants, gift card fraud. When, pres- when prescription, um, um, we look for when prescription spend drops, it's actually a, a negative signal. But we should be, we're going to do that in a nuanced way, but, but man, could we use some help in that fight to really put more on, whether it's just thoughts of, hey, you guys should look for this, um, or have you thought about, we, we would love to, to have more input so that we can be better. Um, second thing is we want to be in more people's hands. So how do we get out there um, is, is a, a question because more people's hands that we're in, the bigger the data set, the bigger the data set, um, the more um, research we could uh, possibly do together. Um, and other things. So I'll stop here, um, um, saving only five minutes for questions, but um, uh, knowing that I was different than the usual one, but I will, uh, I will stop sharing and uh, open it up to see if anyone has any comments or questions. Uh, thanks very much, Todd. I think the, the power of the data set is pretty compelling. Um, what, one question that uh, I'm sure others will have, but is uh, how easy is it to link the financial transaction data to which you have access to other other data. Uh, so I'm I'm thinking about that that Hopkins study that was written up. You know how, how does how do you link this to Medicare data or to or, or to other clinical data? Um. So so for now, what we do, we are in the early stages of it. So it's a great question. So we have we're just producing a ton of data, and um, we're look and we're looking for incidents of of matching up. Okay, when our to be to be kind of really sort of in the stone age, we are taking when we know that our, our customers have memory care issues, um, and matching that up with um, the patterns that we're seeing. So, um, and then we're putting it out there for any um, to, for anyone to use. But right now, the data set's relatively small, so we haven't we use that study actually in addition to an AARP fraud watch uh, memory care study um, as inspiration for us to write the rules to look for the things versus we connected it to any meaningful data set. Still really early. So I haven't done it yet. This is the shortest answer. Any, um, yeah. feel free to put, put questions in the chat or speak up. How, how early do the changes in the financial budgeting, payment problems, et cetera, begin um, versus, you know, when a patient might be first diagnosed with the mildest form of, you know, mild cognitive impairment? So the um, study I mentioned says actually about six years. That uh, uh, that six years is the is the average window of like of when you can start to see those types of uh, that, which is a frankly a pretty large trailer, and usually not a lot of intervention on the family, right? That's that's when you're in mom's forgetful, mom's losing it um, type of family conversations. When you start to see um, when you start to see um, those look like patterns. Uh, we, we think, frankly, we can get to a diagnosis much earlier or intervention much earlier than, than, than six years. But six years is the, um, is the average number. Thanks. Excellent. Uh, really uh, eye-opening uh, presentation. Never really thought about any of this before. Yeah, you know, it's, it's um, a kind of an emerging, uh, mm-hmm. so it's incredibly mature science for fraud protection. So there are, if you look at, there there are um, hundreds of people in the basement at all, every bank that you know, who are cranking out this type of behavioral analysis in the interest of the bank, in the interest of fraud protection. Um, These are the exact same data sets that we think just can be used. And one of the reasons I was so excited when speaking to Pete and speaking to, and and learning of of the mission from John of like, wow, imagine we can serve customers with this great, but imagine um, being part of an effort. Um, looking for vital signs, right? Um, so it'd be interesting to to find the way transactional uh, data becomes part of the part of the um, part of the ecosystem. Um, uh, so there's a question I can answer quickly that went into the chat, which are in terms of both the consumer and for the data in general, does the app start tracking as soon as you have it and make a transaction, or does it go backward and look at previous transactions? So it goes backward instantly. It goes backward about two years and creates those patterns um, about overnight. It's a machine learning engine, so. To get a baseline, it looks backward two years and figures out what normal looks like. So you can start getting strange behavior or behavior change alerts actually within an hour because it could be something you could shop somewhere or do something 
meaningfully standard deviations away. Not, it just doesn't just mean different, but the, but if it's a meaningful uh, um, divergence from normal behavior, even if it was over the course of two years, um, that's how we have an impact right away. Other, that way we don't have to build, 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 build a beta set. Um, you know, so we look backward as the long-winded answer to that question. We have time for one more question. Uh, cool. Well, I, I think we're good. So. Todd, uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, taking the time and introducing us to, to an area that's obviously vital, as you would put it. And, and um, I, I anticipate there are going to be opportunities for us to collaborate both on a small scale, thinking about where one might want to pilot this in patient populations, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we can talk offline. I'm, I'm thinking about people, for example, who are hospitalized with a stroke. Um, you could imagine that this is a service that could be a great value in the recovery course and a way of educating people what, what their financial transactions look like. But there are lots of other opportunities as well for joint data analyses. So we will follow up. Great. And um, is, there, um, is there a data science person with whom we should dock? Should we dock directly with you? I'll dock directly with me. Our team is, is um, big and our data team is big and growing. So um, come connect directly with me and I'll, I'll, I'll get Great. things in the right place. And, and to everyone, I really appreciate uh, the open mind for this one. I know it's a, I know it's a different one, but we, th we think it's a huge, there's huge potential here. Yeah. So for really um, any ideas are good ideas. So we're very happy to whiteboard with anybody on the, uh, anyone on the call. And thank you for the, for the time and attention.